Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for this edition of the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. We're excited that you've joined us today. We've got a wonderful show lined up for you uh, as we come down to the end of September. And one thing I want to make a note of, right now there's a lot of construction going on around us, and you may occasionally, uh, through the show, hear the uh, sounds of hammers, uh, alarms, fire alarms, burglar alarms, all kinds of noises that might be created by the folks doing the construction. So please excuse us. Uh, We're under construction. Well, let's get started with today's shows. We'll start first with our thought for the week. Uh, That is get ready, get set, and go. It's the fourth quarter. Then we'll check in with Dick on the business of Lone Star. And our special guest today is Ann Causey, a licensed professional counselor who will share with us the business side of being a professional. I also have some update on some local business news and some ideas that I hope you can use even in your business today. So sit back, get ready, pull out your pad and pen, and let's get started. And the first thing, I always want to remind you that if you have a comment about the show, a thought, or a question, you can always email me right here at the station. Email address rick, R-I-C-K, at irlonestar.com. Don't forget that email address because I'd love to hear from you. And even if you have a question about your own business, I'll be glad to take a look at it and respond to you. Well, our thought for the week, get ready, get set, go. It's the fourth quarter. It's hard to believe that by the end of the week we'll be on the uh, first day of October in the beginning of the fourth quarter of 2016. And for a lot of people, the beginning of the fourth quarter is a very, very important time in the life of their business because in the fourth quarter there are many seasonal businesses that do 40 50 percent or more of their sales and they have really got to be prepared they have to be prepared for the fourth quarter everything in place everything ready to go another thing that's important about the fourth quarter if you add it up we have approximately four weeks in october three weeks in november when you take thanksgiving out and then another three weeks before the christmas holidays hit us So you add it all up, and we've got about 10, maybe 11 weeks of actual business opportunity in front of us, regardless of the business that we're involved in. And that's all we've got to finish out 2016. So if you're not in a seasonal business, your annual business, where your sales revenue are kind of spread out through the year, that's all you've got left to do the things you want to do and hit your targets, revenues, profits, and so on and so forth. So it's time to get ready, get set, and go. So you can move your business in the direction and find those opportunities that will equal out to you having a great year in your business. You're in the right place if you're a business owner, manager, or you're considering starting your own business. Because the weekly business hours where Montgomery County comes to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve your business, and to hear from some of our own local business leaders on how they have found success right here in Montgomery County. I want to give you a reminder, too, that we're on Facebook. The Weekly Business Hour has its own Facebook page, and I encourage you to go to Facebook and like our page because that means you'll get the weekly updates of the podcast of each show. You can set the reminder on your mobile device or on your computer, and each time a show is posted, you'll know it's there. And then you can listen to the entire show or parts of it that might be important to you. So remember, like us on Facebook, the Weekly Business Hour page. Well, we start business every week. We check in with Dick right here at Lone Star Community Radio to see what their business is doing this week. Dick, what's going on this week? As you know, the construction is just the start of the installation of the FM stuff. Uh, When I say stuff, I mean the whole rearranging of the studio. Uh, We're in the middle of the construction process, and we're scheduled to be done in live on October 4th. So hopefully this week and the beginning of next week, you'll be able to hear us on Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1. We're doing our best to become the best community radio here in Conroe. Yeah, it's an exciting time for any business when you expand in a manner that – I don't know what the right word is, but you have a way that you're doing business, and now you're going to add a whole entire different way to get your business out to the public. So FM's exciting, not only for me as a person who does a show or someone who's involved with the uh, community is bringing in our nonprofits and connecting them, but our entire community will be better served by having the broadcast available to the public on FM. So stay tuned and keep it in mind. We'll be on FM shortly here at Lone Star Community Radio. 
Now we're to that part of the show. I say it every week, and I mean it every week, where we have our in-house guest, our live guest. And Ann Causey has been kind enough to agree to be here today. She's a licensed professional counselor. Uh, been one for a long time. A lot of experience to share with us. And welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, professionals, lawyers, doctors, accountants, uh, they're business people, too. And a lot of times in the business world, we forget about it because you practice your profession every day. Right. And in your case, uh, being a professional counselor, if you don't mind to get us started, get us a little bit of background on yourself of what your experience has been in building your own practice. Well, it sort of happened by accident. I actually had another career. I was a legal secretary and in my mid-20s and just thinking, wow, I'm going to be doing this a long time. So I did my master's for fun. I did my master's in counseling for fun, just thinking it would be a fun thing to do and realized it was what I was created to do. And so I have a story that's a little bit easier than maybe a lot of people who are listening. I just sort of fell into things. I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, at the time I was graduating from school, uh, a counseling center who I knew someone at the place uh, invited me to join them. And uh, after that, I, I branched out on my own. So um, I think the secret to it all is that I found what I was made to do. And I think that that's a big challenge for people who are trying to start their own businesses. Right. And you and I talked a little bit about the show. It's what I used to call the, or still do call the, the square peg round hole. You got to be the right size or right dimension peg in the right hole and it is difficult to find it how'd you know you were in the right place do you know what I have always felt very blessed to be alongside people when they were going through difficult things not everybody can do that not, not everybody wants to do that but it makes me feel like I'm useful it, it gives meaning to my life and so it was just night and day from doing the secretarial work that I'd been doing to, to feeling like I was helping people and watching them go on with their lives and achieve the goals that they wanted to. And it it just became evident very quickly that I was in the right, split, right place. And how long have you been in, the, in your profession? I've actually been counseling for 27 years. Well, you've got a lot of experience to share with us, a lot of experience about building a business. Uh, one of the things I, and I asked you your permission to do this, but I find that a lot of people, uh, when it comes to professionals, they, they, get an, they have an idea of the doctor, the lawyer, the accountant, what they do, but a lot of times they don't know what a professional counselor, what is that all about? Could you give us a brief background so we can understand what a professional counselor does? Absolutely. I think a lot of people are confused about that, and there's a stigma. Sometimes people think of a counselor as somebody who helps people who are crazy. But the reality is, is that all of us have challenges. We all have had disappointments. We've all had struggles. And so what a counselor does is provide a very safe and non-judgmental environment where somebody can be honest about how they're feeling. Because I'm not in their family and I'm not being impacted by what they're going through, I don't have the emotional reactivity that perhaps a wife or family member or even a best friend might have. And I, ref I do a lot of reflecting back of what a person is telling me. So they can hear what's going on with them. They, sometimes we talk and we don't really grasp the depth of what we're saying. And as clarification begins to take place for someone, number one, they feel better. There's, my underpinning belief is that relationships in our life of all kinds, that is the stability in our life. There's a lot of research about that that shows that human beings do not function well in isolation. And especially for business people and especially men in business, because there's such a stigma on men that to have an emotion or to be an emotional person is weakness, they can shut that down kind of and try to deal with everything on the inside. But when they're talking to someone else who's not judging them, who doesn't have expectations on them, and they begin to release that motion and understand it, they build a plan for how they want their lives to change. It's a very powerful process. It's kind of mystical. It's kind of, it's very spiritual. Uh, you can't really describe it, but it's, it's a beautiful process, and people usually come out on the other side ready to move forward in their lives. Well, you know, one of the things you mentioned about relationships and one of the things I talk about in, in my practice and we talk about on the show is building strong business relationships with customers, clients, obviously, vendors, employees, yes. uh, lots of relationship building. Yes. And you're talking about building relationships in a, in a little different way, but maybe the same. 
You're right. It is different in the sense that those people you're naming, they're people that we care about very much, but they're not necessarily our peers. They're not somebody that you're going to share your challenge with because you have to lead them. You have to be strong for them. And so I'm talking about the kind of emotional maintenance that we all need. Uh, We need friends. We need mentors. We need safe places to be honest with ourselves and uh, to receive validation for what we're experiencing. And we don't always do that with our, the, pe- the types of people that you were mentioning. Right. There is a little bit of difference, but there is a similarity. Well, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, we're already up against our first break. Uh, we're going to take our first break here, and I hope you'll stay with us. And when we come back, Ann and I are going to talk a little bit more about her business and how she built her business as a professional and how she can really help you in your business. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Here we are, another morning in Montgomery County. It's 6 a.m. and all you can do is think about hitting that snooze button. But don't. Wake up with me, your morning radio host of Morning's of Lone Star Dick. Every weekday morning from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio, join me for some music, talk, interviews, giveaways, and of course Montgomery County's weather and traffic. I'm here to make your morning start. Every weekday morning, online at IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1 with Mornings with Lone Star. An estimated 1 in 10 births will result in a neonatal intensive care stay, also known as the NICU. Overnight, a family can find themselves and their newborn baby in a critical situation. The Mila Foundation financially and spiritually assists families in need. If you would like to volunteer or become a monthly sponsor, please visit us at www.themilafoundation.org. Again, that's www.themilafoundation.org. Because every life matters. Tailorized PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Tailorized PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Tailorized PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at tailorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. At Jazzy Junk, volunteers reclaim, restore, and recycle. Jazzy Junk is a nonprofit resale storefront where you will discover wonderful, unique finds at very affordable prices on furniture, antiques, books, art, home decor, and more. When you shop Jazzy Junk, you support New Danville, a community for adults with developmental disabilities. We receive new donations daily, so plan a visit to Jazzy Junk today to find that perfect item or gift. Our motto is here today gone today so remember to hurry in and shop often for the best selection jazzy junk is located in the outlets at conroe on league line road and i-45 north call 936-441-4500 or visit our website jazzyjunk.org that's j-u-n-q-u-e for more information and store hours Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and your host for the show. And we've been having a wonderful conversation here with Ann Causey, a licensed professional counselor, about her business and about the importance of what she does. And let's talk a little bit more, Ann, if we can, about sure. if, if someone came to you today, I mean, you started in business 27 years ago. Uh, starting out by working with someone, getting some experience, which I happen to believe is one of the best paths to take, and then going out on your own once you had that experience. If I came to you today and say, gosh, Ann, I'm thinking about starting a business, Main Street business or whatever it might be, uh, give me some general business advice. What do I need to do to, to start on the right foot and hopefully be successful? I think one of the most important things that I would say would be gather a team around you. It is very difficult to be successful in a vacuum. It's amazing how much, which I've already mentioned, how, how much it makes a difference when you don't feel alone with things. Just having somebody who believes in you, is walking alongside of you, can pick up the pieces when you have a bad day, can encourage you to go forward. So that would be probably my main first piece of advice I'd give. Well, I think that's very wise, too, because that's one of the things that, so many people lose sight of you're going to have your ups and downs when you right. start 
it's inevitable. It's just like life, right? Mm -hmm. But when you start a business, particularly if you've never been in business on your own, uh, there are all kinds of things that come your way, all of them surmountable if you're prepared. And if I've got somebody to talk to about it or to be there with me side by side, it makes a huge difference. It does. There's no doubt about that. You've built a great counseling business. I mean, 20-some years in any business is, is a label of success. And you've got 20-plus years. So I'm going to make the assumption you've got a great business. What did it take to do that? Well, it took commitment. I remember when I moved here from an, uh, another state, and uh, I was offered a position. Somebody offered me an office and to join a, a group kind of informally. And I didn't have any clients. And so I came to the office and I would sit there for four hours every Friday on the believing that if I began to build relationship with the people around me, that when an opportunity presented itself, my business would begin to grow. And that was in December 2002. And my business has grown incredibly since then. So from zero to, you know, full time. Well, how do you market your business? How does a professional market a counseling business? You know, it's not an easy business to market because you're selling yourself. Uh, you're, you're basically committing yourself to people. And so I did find that uh, it was very important to establish a good website where people could find me. And actually, one of my proudest moments is that uh, there is a website called healthgrades.com where people who are looking for a doctor or a therapist can read reviews. And I've been very fortunate to have many clients who have gone to that website and have said nice things about me and given other people information about what kind of service they can expect when they come to me. And so that type of client-to-client referral has been a great source of uh, success for me. What about good old business networking? Do you do any of that? I do. I am a member of a networking group called BNI, Business Networking International. And the reason I chose that particular group is because their underlying belief is that the more we give business to each other, the more that will come back to us. And since I'm in that type of a business where I'm giving in the hopes that it will produce fruit. I feel like the the networking that I do also does that. And besides that, they're a great group of people. We we really have a great time. We meet at 7.30 a.m. on Friday morning, but uh, it's such a great group that it's worth it. So you built up networking, and that's work for you and your business. Anything else that you use to market your business? Well, I am able to do speaking, so sometimes people might have me come by to do a small group talk or something like that. I am also a Christian counselor, and not that that is the focus of every person who comes in, but uh, a lot of times people who are having trouble with their marriages or with their children, and they, they want input that's not only competent, but also they're not going to be told that they're leaning on a crutch because their spirituality is important to them. So also, uh, I do get quite a few referrals through the local churches and things like that. You know, I, you do what I call uh, availability marketing, is we make ourselves available to whatever's out there. Yes. And we latch on to it. Yes. And that's one of the things is, uh, you and I discussed briefly prior to the show. Uh, I have a hard time with some clients just saying, just get out there, just be available, uh, and just make yourself visible. Because you've got a great business here. I've figured that out talking to you. Mm -hmm. But availability does make a difference, doesn't it? Yes, it does. There's no doubt about that. Well, what, you know, looking down the road, uh, you know, it's to me the area to many people of counseling therapy uh, is, and you used a word, and I'll use it again, kind of mystical. We don't understand it. Uh, What do you see for the future? I mean, uh, as you discussed earlier, the world we live in today has all kinds of pressures, confusion. The news itself, uh, and I 100% agree with all this. What do you see for the future for counseling and therapy and and the future for your business as well? Well, I think more and more because the, the news is traumatic. People are traumatized when they turn on the news. And so I think what I'm seeing in my practice is that more and more people are just having a hard time living life because it's frightening and they don't know what's going to happen next. And so that makes the relationships in their lives more and more important than ever before. Um, So I think, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Um, 
I think that the whole electronics revolution is actually making things a little bit more difficult for people in some ways. Although we can do business across the world, uh, the, the important things, like even just spending a few seconds giving eye contact to someone who's important to you, we tend not to do that as much because we're, we're trying to multitask. We've got our phones in our hands or uh, we're looking something up quickly because we want some information. So I think uh, I do a lot of relationship counseling, marriage counseling, premarital counseling. Um, people with anxiety and depression often have issues in their significant relationships. And then in the business world, um, you know, men and women who are out there taking care of business, sometimes they need to stop and take care of the business owner. And so they will come in and they will talk with me about their challenges, about their struggles. And it just seems to bring them a sense of uh, relief and clearer direction. So I think it's going to continue to grow. It is sad that there is a stigma that some people think of those people who see counselors as crazy. But actually, I think those are the courageous people, the people who are able to acknowledge I'm not perfect. I don't always have it together. I tell my clients, I'm not sitting in this chair because I have it all together. I'm in this chair because I'm not afraid to admit I don't have it all together. And we face things together, and we see amazing things happen. You know, that's that's one of the things that it would be an encouragement uh, from my perspective because I've been around counseling, uh, mental health issues, do some volunteer work, and related to business people and have clients uh, and people I work with that, that need help find the right counseling situation it can really make you better and in a sense make your business better you become a much more effective leader in yes. your business much more satisfied in what you're you're getting from your yeah. business your family uh, it's a better world is that a fair statement that's a very fair statement and also for anybody who's considering it the most important factor for them in finding a counselor would be well two factors one they need to be competent but also the quality of the relationship with the therapist is the second most important factor because it's a real relationship. You need to find someone that you feel comfortable with because the, that relationship must be intact in order for it to be, in order to accomplish the goals that most people are coming in to counseling to address. And people also need to understand it's not a lifetime commitment. No, sometimes it's very short term. Sometimes people will come in once or twice. Sometimes when they're dealing with with deeper issues, um, you know, sometimes they have something that happened to them when they were growing up or if they've if they've experienced a trauma like being in in combat or something like that. That's a longer term therapy. And we do have a specific approach we use for that, that trauma recovery. And that can take longer. But therapy is what a person wants to make it. It, The therapist doesn't tell the client how long they're going to stay. The client decides how long they are benefiting from it. Yeah, and I think you make a real good point because I run into situations like people uh, we're putting an exit strategy together, uh, which I believe is a strategy and it works out over a period of time, not just in a, unless there's an emergency and immediately say, immediate sale of the business or we've hit a, a bump in our business, we don't know which way to go. These kind of things lend themselves to the type of work that I would believe you would do to help me over those little humps, if you will, or through those little little traumas that hit in the business I'm in. Absolutely, because it's very, that type of a life transition is huge for someone. It rocks their world. And so it can throw everything off kilter. Well, I think it's very important uh, to those who are listening that as, as business owners, people thinking about being in business, consider a professional counselor. I mean, these folks are in business. Uh, Ann has built a successful practice over 20 plus years and you need to consider this as one of the tools, if you will, in your toolbox. Then when you hit a bump, uh, just like mentors, and we talk about that a lot because that's what I do in mentoring people and helping them make those difficult decisions to transition their business to the next step. And if somebody wanted to contact you, had questions, uh, was curious about what you do particularly, what's the best way for them to do it? Well, they could call me at 832-492-5068. Or they could go to my website at annecausey.com. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ann, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I think that's a lot of good information for us to add to what we know to build a bigger, better business. We're going to take a short break. and we come back, I'm going to give you some ideas and some business news, hopefully that will make a difference in your business even today. So please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. 
Are you interested in learning more about preparing quick, healthy, and safe meals for your family? Would you like to spend time with others learning tips and tricks, along with practicing and tasting nutritious food? If so, the On the Road to Healthy Living Mobile Cooking School is for you. Call Amy Ressler at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service at 936 936- 539-7825 to find a class near you or volunteer to host a class. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategies and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. Hey, Conroe, this is Douglas B. with Veterans Air. I want to remind you to tune into the show on October 4th at 1 p.m. We're going to be interviewing the director and deputy director of the USS Lexington. That is an aircraft carrier down in Corpus Christi, Texas, if you didn't know. And we'll be talking more about common sense for control and what other oddities come out of our minds. Remember, tune in October 4th at 1 p.m. here on your Lone Star Community Radio. Running a business is hard. Pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmpolio. Bullying is a big issue in today's schools, and conflict is a big issue in today's world. In order to empower school-age children and help them come up with creative ways to approach conflict and say no to bullies, the Dispute Resolution Center of Montgomery County is hosting a Conflict Resolution Day Bookmark R Contest for Montgomery County children in grades K-8. through The submission deadline for entries is October 3rd, and an award ceremony will take place on October 21st. Cash prizes will be awarded. For more information, please visit resolution-center.org. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. Uh, we're going into our third segment today. You heard from Ann Causey, a licensed professional therapist, in our first session. If you missed any part of that, don't forget, the show is uh, put into a podcast and posted at IRLoneStar.com and also on the Weekly Business Hour Facebook page here by Wednesday, so you can listen to her interview. I think Ann offered a lot of great information about not only about how to build a professional practice, but also how a professional therapist can help us build better businesses. Well, this is part of the show I like to pick up on business news going on around Montgomery County, anything I think that may help us in our business, as well as give you perhaps a tip or an idea that you might be able to utilize in your business today. I guess the biggest piece of business news that I picked up this last week that impacts really all of us here in Montgomery County, directly or indirectly, is they're finally going to open up the I-45 HOV lanes. Uh, And by the end of this month, they say, that's been delayed for quite a while, and I think it's going to change traffic patterns, uh, not only for those that commute to Houston on a regular basis, uh, but also, I think, for our businesses. Because when you change traffic patterns, if you have a Main Street storefront business, it changes the way that, people's go, that people go to work. It changes when they go to work. It changes when they come home because the HOV lane should make the trip faster. So keep that in mind. If you have a storefront business uh, that would be in, impacted directly or indirectly by the HOV lane, uh, if you don't know, the new HOV lanes will, will run from uh, Loop 336 South uh, all the way down to 1960, where it'll connect with the existing HOV lane. Hopefully, this will speed up the movement of traffic, uh, which will do many things for us. One, it'll increase the attractiveness of living in this area, so it will make the daily commute easier. And two, it will allow people to go to work a little bit later, uh, get home a little earlier. Uh, again, and this impacts all our businesses, typically, I believe, in a very positive way. So be aware of that little piece of business news, and hopefully by the end of this month, they'll start moving south. 
uh, on the uh, HOV lanes, and they say in a couple weeks later the northbound lanes will be open as well. A uh, business tip I'd like to share with you is how do you build a successful day? I don't know if you've ever thought about that. Uh, I'm not going to tell you there are 10 different ways to do it, but, you know, as we enter each day, uh, a lot of us just kind of get up, get dressed, go to work, and we tackle what's ahead of us. Yeah, we might have a things-to-do list, uh, some things that are important to get done. I talked earlier in the show about this being the beginning of the fourth quarter. Here come October 1st. Hopefully everyone has a little to-do list of things to do in the fourth quarter to finish up the year, get prepared for a new year, get prepared to uh, prepare their uh, business taxes, things like that. But I think there's a lot of things that people can utilize, a lot of thoughts and ideas that maybe are missed along the way that can help you build a much more successful business. And first and foremost is always think about your customers, your clients, and yourself before you start anything, before you make any kind of change. Carefully consider the impact of that change or that improvement on your customers, your clients, and on yourself. And when I say yourself, I mean your business itself, your employees, your vendors, and also on yourself personally. What is the impact of that change going to have on all those players? So many times I think we we push ahead with a change, with a new idea, or even react to a situation, and we don't consider the players. And I'm not talking about spending hours of time, so please don't go, oh, geez, I can't do that. But think about that. Think about the last time you made a decision, whether it was a decision off the top of your head where you thought about the impact not just on an individual customer or just not just on you, and I'm talking about a business decision, but the impact on all the players I mentioned previously, the client, your vendors, your your employees, and yourself, your family, okay? If you have a family-run business, the other members of the family, if you have partners on the other partners, and these are not necessarily major decisions. I was reading an article recently by Jeff Hayden. Jeff's a contributing editor at Inc., uh, and it was entitled, What Successful People Do Every Day, and it started me thinking about some of these things, and that first one about the impact of our decisions, particularly major ones but also minor ones, on everyone around us, it's important that we consider all the players. Too many times I've found in working with clients and looking at businesses, it seems like decisions are made in a selfish manner. They're made where the individual thinks about themselves perhaps first, or only a couple of those categories that I mentioned of people where business decisions have an impact on everybody. So I encourage you, as you build your business, and you're hopefully building, trying to build and grow a successful business, you'll consider all the players. Another thing I learned earlier in life that Jeff touches on in his article is consider your business as a separate living entity. This is something that I was taught by my father growing up in business, and I also was taught from a legal perspective in law school, is that a business, a corporation, call it anything you want, is a separate entity. And when we make decisions or do something, we have to realize that it is a separate entity set out alone. Yes, the business, we're passionate about it. We want to see it grow. We want to see it flourish. But it is separate from our personal emotional feelings. And there are decisions that you have to make that impact it in a way that you have to keep it separate. You need to be detached enough to be excited about the project or the decision and want to see it succeed, not just for yourself, but for the business itself. You got a lot of talent, and if you're coachable and you're willing to find the best answers to any problem, no matter from where they come, then you can build that separate living entity into a great business. But you've got to have the ability. You've got to be coachable. In other words, you've got to be willing to listen to what others have to say, and you've got to be willing to look to find the best answer, to spend that time sometimes necessary to find the best answer, not just be reactive. Another area I found that is important is stay creative and flexible and focus on solutions. Look for solutions to the challenges in your business. Think about it when you're selling to people. People want to buy a product, they want to buy a service, but they really want to buy a solution in most instances. They want a product or a service that solves a problem. 
that takes care of something, that makes something happen more efficient, more effective, something that eliminates some something they have to do. They want solutions. So you can't become too attached to your process. I'm a process guy. I love processes. Love to see business processes that people develop and how to get things done in a very efficient manner, effective manner every day. But I think sometimes people become too married to their business processes and they don't look for solution-driven processes or don't adjust to find those solutions. Another area I think that people miss, and it's an opportunity to make yourself more successful, is realize that you're building a business is like putting a puzzle together. And that one solution, that one decision that's being made today, small or big, affects the entire business in the long run. You're building an enterprise, if you will, if you want kind of a business title for it. You're building a business, and you have to fit it together like a puzzle. So be aware that there are a lot of pieces, and every day you're providing at least one or more pieces to the puzzle. And this, your ability to put the puzzle together successfully can make all the difference in the world on how successful your business is. And last but not least, I touched on it earlier, is a lot of times that you put together your product, your service, a new idea particularly, and you develop how you're going to present it to people and you look at what its advantages are and its benefits and you go through all that basic marketing analysis that's available to us and you say, okay, let's, let's, let's take it out there, let's make it work, let's experiment with it, let's see what it can do. Don't pitch the product pitch the solution. Again, I touched on this earlier, but this has to do with sales. Don't focus on what you need or what your company needs. Be sure you're focusing on what the client, the customer, even the vendor or the employee needs. The point is focus on those other people when you develop something and you realize that you need to have a solution to make something work. Well, that's my thoughts for today. Uh, I hope That little bit of information will stimulate you to think about your own business and to bring into focus the things that are important to you. We're going to take a short break now. We're going to come back, and I'm going to offer to you my Silver Fox Advisor Tip of the Week, and I hope you will stick with us because it's entitled Grow the Entrepreneur in You. We'll see you in just a few moments. Did you know there are more than 790 abused and neglected children currently in foster care in Montgomery County? Will you help make a difference? I'm Allie Stevens with Costa Child Advocates of Montgomery County. We train and support volunteers to be the voice of children in the foster care system. Kids are moved from their home because of abuse and neglect, and we need volunteers just like you to advocate for these children. To learn more about becoming an advocate, please visit costaspeaksforkids.com. That's costaspeaksforkids.com. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. Hello, Montgomery County. I'm Rachel Baldwin with Special Olympics Texas Area 6. Are you a fan of courage? Are you a fan of determination? Are you a fan of acceptance, grace, and skill? Then you're already a fan of Special Olympics. Make it official. Volunteer, coach, and or compete and be a fan of dignity and acceptance. The dedication of our Special Olympic Texas volunteers provides mainstreaming experiences for athletes with intellectual disabilities. You will touch the heart of another person and it will move you in a meaningful way that lifts the spirit. Please visit the Heart of East Texas Area 6 webpage at www.sotx.org. Also, like us on Facebook to be a fan and be part of Special Olympics Texas. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host. And we're in the final segment of today's show. 
And this is where I'd like to share with you a Silver Fox Advisor tip of the week. And this week, I'd like to talk a little bit with you about the growing the entrepreneur in you. Well, first and foremost, I realize that many people go out and they start a business, they have an idea, and they take on a label of entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. I start business. Uh, even to the point that today there's some controversy over what an entrepreneur uh, really is. But for the sake of this discussion this morning, let's talk about an entrepreneur, somebody who starts a business, has an idea, maybe has never been in business before. Many times that's the case. They've always worked for other people, but they've had that desire to go out and work for themselves, and they think they can do something better than others do it, or they have a very unique idea that they think that they can go into market and bring that idea to the market and sell it to people. It's something unique and different. What I'd like to focus on this morning is the fact that if you're in business for yourself, whether you just started yesterday or plan to start tomorrow, you started 10 years ago, I contend that we always should have a little bit of entrepreneur in it inside of us. And that entrepreneur should be working in the background, perhaps, every day. That we should remember the things that got us where we are if we're in an existing business and we've been able to find success. And But if we're just starting out being an entrepreneur, there are certain things that will help us, certain basics that will help all of us. Uh, our guest earlier today, Ann Causey, pointed out that one of the things that was important to her in starting her business is it was the right fit. Uh, the square peg and the square hole met each other, as I said, and uh, she just fit into the business of being a professional counselor. She found her calling. She found a good fit. And I think that's a very important thing, that if we have a passion to be in business, a passion for certain products, services, and whatnot, that we do find the right business mode to operate and develop that business. And many times I find that when businesses aren't successful, it's because there's a mis a mismatch, if you will, between the individual and the product or service. So I think the point Ann made is worth remembering. But let's talk about the entrepreneur in us, whether we're starting a business today or we've been in business for 10, 20 years. First thing you do as an entrepreneur or someone who starts a business, you develop a plan. I mean, everything in the beginning should be about planning, developing a plan, putting some kind of plan together, using someone on the outside like me as a mentor to help you build a plan, to ask you those critical questions, provide you perhaps with a format that works. There are many formats out there. Some are long, lengthy in pages. I've seen plans over 100 pages long for a business that started with $5,000 in capital. I've seen business plans as short as a half a page. I literally have seen business plans written on a napkin in a restaurant in a discussion. But the fact is that the entrepreneur is always thinking about their plan so that when it finally gets reduced to writing, hopefully it's something they've thought long and hard about and asked all those right questions about. But plans are worthless. But plans are everything because really planning never ends. And where the plan ends, so to speak, or really begins is when it's put in place. And that's the second thing we talk about, I'd like to talk about, is taking your plan and putting it into place, putting it into action, going into business, going back to work today on a Monday morning, and you started 10, 20 years ago, and you've got that plan, it's been modified, it's been changed, but you still have that plan. And you take that plan and you put it into action this morning when you unlock the front door or when you send that first email, or make that first phone call, or have that first business meeting. And the second phase, I think, is what I call a discovery phase, that your plan is really your idea, and now we're going to go out and we're going to implement that plan, and we're going to find out what people think about it. We're going to find out what people think about our product, our services, what are they going to buy from us. I mean, think about how difficult that can be. I've got an idea. I've got a plan in my pocket. I've written it down. I've thought about it. In some cases, spent years thinking about it because I've developed a new product or a new idea. And now I'm going to put it out there for people to take a look at it. Lots and lots of things to discover at that point. And at that point also, a certain evolution will take place because the plan that we put together in many, if not most, in all cases, is going to be modified based on what we find out as an entrepreneur we find out and the feedback we get. And that's why it's so important to be a good listener. You hear a lot about that. You can read a lot about it, about being a good listener. And I think that's a critical, critical element for every entrepreneur. 
you've got to have good listening skills. And you have to set up a process, if you will, where you can get that feedback back to you, where you get people to talk to you, either in writing or verbally, face-to-face. But you take that feedback and you record that feedback and you analyze that feedback. What are they telling me about my product? Is it too big? Is it too expensive? Does it need to be smaller? Does it need to be in multiples? Or the service that we deliver? What does it need? What is it missing so that we can build a really great company here? And the evolution takes place and it needs to be in a very proactive way. You need to be geared to constant discovery, constant feedback, and you need to react to that feedback in a way that makes the product more successful. Now, what I just said is you don't need to make a change every time somebody says something. And that's one of the things I have found. And it's almost funny if it wasn't so sad where people will listen carefully and they'll hear this and they'll hear that or they'll see this. They'll get this comment online and they'll keep trying to change and they get frantic about it and they get lost and ultimately they're unsuccessful. That's why you have to take the feedback. I believe you've got to record the feedback and then you've got to carefully analyze it. And I believe you set a time frame, say three months, six months. We're going to review this in three months. We're going to review it in six months. A lot of this is driven by the capital, your cash flow needs, but that you are constantly reviewing, but not constantly changing. You make your adjustments in a very organized, planned way based on the gross or the majority of the feedback you get back. You make what they call an industry day. It's kind of a a pivot word that's been around. You make a pivot. In other words, I was going down this road, and this is where it looked the right way. My plan, all my thinking, even the surveys, the marketing I did said go left, and I really needed to go right to be more successful. So I make a pivot, if I will. I make a turn. Sometimes these turns or pivots are very slight. It's like changing the color from blue to green or green to blue. Sometimes they're major, where I have to just really scrap something, keep my idea concept, but rebuild it, repackage it. Change the way it's uh, delivered to customers. All kinds of possibilities here, but I make the pivot. It's interesting that during this evolution phase, and one thing I want to say that a warning to all of us, if the business is really successful, meaning that we generate sales, still having information come in, still making adjustments, but it's successful because we have cash flow building, we have sales building, at some point we have to be careful that the business doesn't outstrip the ability of us as the owners of the business. And to me, that's one of the things that you've got to constantly be working out as you go through the evolutionary stage of the business. You've done your planning, you've discovered, and now you're evolving the product. And at some point, there's a high potential that the product and your business, perhaps after a year or two, three years, at some point may outgrow you. Got to be very careful. And then the, the final stage is growth, right? That's what we want. We want a growing business, whatever that means. And it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And I think that's important for you as a business owner or a potential business owner to define what growth means to you. Does growth mean I want 100000 in sales? I want 35000 in, in in a return, a salary? In other words, I want a business just so I can be in business and draw a salary? Or do I want a $100 million business? Obviously, two very different things. But many times I find people start off, they jump in, they're an entrepreneur, they start pushing, they shove, they plan, they grow, they evolve, they discover, they do all the right things, they keep pushing, they get over the humps, they make the mistakes, they've got enough capital to get them through it, and then one day they wake up and say, how did I get here? I never want to be this big, or I I don't have the money to grow it any larger, and I'm in trouble, I'm hanging out. Uh, That's unnecessary. Don't need to do that. Decide how far and how fast you really want to grow your business. Try to keep some clarity in the mix. It's very, very important for you, your customers, your employees, and most important to you and your family. Decide where you want to take the business. That should be part of your original plan, but a plan also that's subject to change as you go along. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that's been helpful to you today. I hope you've enjoyed our show. I've had a lot of fun being here today, and again, thanks to Ann Causey, a professional licensed uh, therapist, uh, an area that I mentioned that I think we all need to think about as business leaders, realize there's a tool in our box, and even if it's not for us that we need some help over a hump, uh, perhaps one of our colleagues does. Something to think about. I encourage you to visit our website at IRLoneStar.com. 
to stay up on everything that's happening in the community here in Montgomery County. Don't forget, we'll be on FM soon. That announcement on an official date will be any day now. And as we close today's show, I want to give a big Lone Star thanks to our sponsors, Patricia Cooper Insurance Company, Schooley Mitchell, Taylorized PR, and of course, the Silver Fox Advisors. And I encourage you, put a note on your calendar for next Monday at 11 o'clock and join us again right here on IRLoneStar.com. Remember also, you too can be a sponsor on the Weekly Business Hour. Just contact me at rick at IRLoneStar.com for details. Look for the podcast of today's show on the Weekly Hour Business Hour page at IRLoneStar.com or on our Facebook page later in the week. And until then, remember always, stay engaged in your business and keep your focus on what counts in your business. Thanks for checking out this production on Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, and TV media, please call 936-647-5747. Or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production. Produced by the show host and Dick Schistler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Uh, contact Dick Schistler at Dick at IRLoneStar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.